Hey guys, welcome to my first quadcopter build video. In this video I will build a tiny whoop I can control with my Turnager Evolution, or for that matter any other AF HDS 2A capable transmitter. I will use the following parts. An E Shin F4 brushed flight controller which comes with a Hoopsan styled power connector. A tiny Flysky FS A8S 8 channel receiver. Chaoli CL820 motors with 1.25mm connector, they come in a pack of 4. An Ishin TX03 NTSC all-in-one FPV cam and switchable transmitter. 1.25mm connectors to make swapping the motors easier. Ishin 3 blade props, they come in a set of 5, so 20 props total. An Ishin 1S 600mAh battery. I got a pack with 4 batteries and a quadruple charger. A 3D printed ducted frame and some rubber bands to hold the battery in place. And some heat shrink as landing gear to protect the motors a little bit. As always, you can find links to everything down in the description. Except for the 3D printed frame, I got everything else from Banggood. The motor pinout on the flight controller is arranged in such a way that positive is always on the bottom, but I want the connectors to be flush with the board and to achieve this I need to swap two of the connectors. This also means that I am swapping the polarity of the motors on the right, which means I will also need to swap them. I hope my drawing explains that a little better. Here is how you would normally connect the motors but I need to swap front and back on the right side. Here I am soldering the connectors. Be careful not to shorten the pins on the ICs next to them. And since I like to be safe, I check that I did not short them out. Next step is to solder the battery connector. Tin the leads and solder it flush to the board. And again, I make sure to not have shortened the connector. The receiver comes with a connector that also has a wire for PPM output. Since I will use SBUS, I will not need the PPM wire. I use my scalpel to lift the latch that is holding the connector and pull out the cable. Since the receiver's connector is too big for the board's pinout, I will solder it directly to the board. The receiver cable is shortened, the wires are stripped and tinned. On this board, you attach a serial receiver to UART1. The square pad is ground, the next one VCC and the third is serial out. The receiver wires are soldered and cut flush. I again check to make sure that I did not shot out the power pins. A quick test to see if the board still powers up. Everything is looking good. Time to see if the motors will actually spin. You can spin up the motors from within better flight. You need to go to the motors tab and check the I do not have my props on checkbox. Also make sure to connect your battery since your motors will not spin up from USB. The motor is spinning up. First success. Quick check to see if the connector and motor swapping makes sense. If so, the motor should spin in the other direction on the right side. Yep, looking good. The frame comes in multiple versions. They differ by the whole size for the motors. I used the biggest one but still had troubles to fit the motors. So I'm using an 8.5mm drill to open the hole. I use four equally length pieces of heat shrink to align the wire on the motor and give the motor some protection from ungentle landings. Left front and right back should spin clockwise, the other two counterclockwise. Let's break in the motors. Let them run for a bit, then pause, and again run a little bit. I increase the speed a little bit every time I do this. Here I am mounting the board and make sure I can arm and disarm from the Turnage Evolution. Everything is looking good. Time to mount the props and give it a first spin. Success! It is alive!
Time for some cable management. I used some duct tape, or for that matter, T-Rex tape to secure the motor wires to the frame. I am not sure if it would not have been better to use small zip ties instead. I will try those once I have to swap the frame. I did not want to stick the flight controller directly to the frame, since I then lose access to the USB port. Instead I decide to use some velcro so I can easily detach the board from the frame. One side of the velcro is cut to fit the frame. The other one is cut to fit the double sided foam pad on bottom of the flight controller. The bottom piece is glued into place. Make sure to use glue that will not melt your 3D printed frame. Better try on a scrap piece first. Fits in nicely. Time to flash the newest firmware. Connect your board and wait until better flight can see it. Navigate to the firmware flasher tab. The right target for this board is Revo. Always choose the right target for your board or you run the risk of bricking it. From the select box below, select the most current stable release. On the bottom click load firmware from online. Once the download is finished, click flash firmware. First the chip is erased, then it is flashed with the new firmware. Once the flashing is done, the board will reboot and you will be able to reconnect. Let's make sure everything went according to plan. Navigate to the CLI tab and issue the version command. That is the version I just flashed. Navigate to the configuration tab. To the right in the ESC motor features section choose brushed in the protocol dropdown. Scroll down a bit and on the left side in the receiver section choose serial based receiver in the receiver mode dropdown and SBUS in the serial receiver provider dropdown. Click save and reboot. Connect to the board once again. Check that the settings are what you said before. The receiver section did not update. That is because I did not enable Serial RX on any of the UART ports. Navigate to the Ports tab and enable Serial RX on UART 1. Click Save and Reboot. Connect once again and make sure that everything is as it should be. Ok, looking good now. Time to set up the modes. I set the arm mode in such a way that I need to move both switches on the back of the turning revolution down. This means I will be able to disarm either with the switch on the left or on the right side. I do not know yet which side will be my disarming side, so this way I can find it out without risking too much. I also set angle mode to be the default when arming the quadcopter. By flipping the switch on top of the turning revolution, I can switch to RAID mode. Here you can see how the switch movements correlate to the mode settings. As mentioned before, I need to move both switches down to arm the quadcopter, but it is enough to move one up to disarm it. The top switch switches between angle and RAID mode. I make sure that everything with channel mapping is ok by moving around the sticks and switches. In the description of the receiver it said it would not have failsafe mode, but someone in the comments said it does, but only in SBUS mode. I am not willing to take that risk. So let's see what happens if I switch off the transmitter. Throttle goes down and the stick position center. Very good. So it will simply fall out of the sky once it loses signal. Time to mount the cam. Since I want to be able to fly without cam or swap the cam to a different model, I decide to solder an angled pin header to the battery connector. As usual, I check for shorts. I also need to change the connector on the cam. 
I cut off the old connector, but leave a little bit of wire so I can reuse it, just in case. Strip and thin the wires, also thin the connector. Since this is a direct connection to the battery, I use heat shrink to be extra secure that the wires will not short out. Let's see how it all fits. I add a bit of tape to give the flight controller some extra stability. Here I experiment with different placements, but then decide to mount it in the center. I use double-sided foam tape to stick the cam on top of the receiver and flight controller. Shake it a bit to make sure it is holding on good. Alright, so let's attach the battery and give it a spin. This is my first flight with cam and only my fifth pack or so. I calibrated the accelerometer with sticks before my first flight and only needed to do minimal trimming. This is so much fun, but I had to order more batteries. Right now I am getting out about 3 minutes per pack, so after 12 minutes the fun is over and I need to wait for the first pack to be fully charged again. My recommendation would be to get at least 12 batteries, then you should be able to charge the first one until you are done with the last one. If you have any questions regarding the build, please leave them in the comments down below. Feel free to ask about specific parts if you want to learn more. If you liked the video, please press the thumbs up button and subscribe. I would really appreciate it.